Our planet is a beautiful place. With so many different countries and cultures coming together, it's a gorgeous melting pot of different ways of life crashing together, and it's simply joyous just how wonderfully different we all are from one another. That being said, there's no denying that sometimes something that might be normal to someone else might seem really peculiar to you, no matter how hard you try to accept that all cultures are different. These are the 20 most bizarre traditions from around the world. Number 20. Purusha People and Strange Death Rituals the vast and varied civilizations of the world are well known. The Troja people have a bizarre death tradition. The peculiar thing about this community's residents is that they like their family members so much that they are unable to part ways with them even after they pass away. So, these locals have the belief that the dead can still be alive. Here, individuals interact with dead bodies as if they were alive, and to achieve this, they dress up the corpses to look like other people while simultaneously taking pictures of them. Isn't it odd to take pictures of deceased people? Death is a social and progressive process for Torsians. When a family member passes away, they often keep the body at home for months, sometimes even years, before they can afford a funeral. It is believed that the soul of the deceased remains in this world until the funeral is held. The soul will then start its journey to Puya, the land of the spirits. The more money the family can save for the funeral, and the greater and more expensive the service can be, the longer the deceased person stays at home. Numerous buffaloes and hundreds of pigs are offered as sacrifices during elaborate burial rituals, which can take up to 12 days. These rituals can run into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Number 19. La Tomatina, Spain a tomato fight and tomato throwing contest are held as part of the La Tomatina festival in the Valencian town of Buol, which is located 30 kilometers from the Mediterranean in the east of Spain. Since 1945, it has been celebrated on the last Wednesday of August in the middle of a festival in Buol that lasts a whole week. In 1945, on the final Wednesday of August, a few young people gathered in the town center to see the Giants and Big Heads figures parade. This is when the La Tomatina Festival got its start. The youth chose to participate in a procession that had singers, giants, and big-headed characters. The activities caused one participant's big head to come off. In a frenzy of wrath, the participant flew and started striking everything in their way. When individuals started throwing tomatoes at each other, a market stand of vegetables was destroyed. The fruit conflict was eventually put to an end by the local police. The next year, a few teenagers got into a planned fight and brought their own tomatoes from home. This started the yearly custom, despite the fact that the local forces broke it up. In the years that followed, numerous people followed the boys' legacy. Isn't it bizarre that you are yet to subscribe to our channel? Click on the subscribe button for more amazing content before a barrage of tomatoes head your way. Number 18. Festival of Scrambled Eggs in Bosnia. In Zenica, Bosnia, they celebrate the beginning of spring with an odd homage to imburijada, which is the Bosnian word for scrambled eggs. In the UK, you might start the beginning of spring by blowing some daffodils or doing some spring cleaning. This celebration ushers in the spring season. The arrival of spring ushers in feelings of hope and fresh starts. The vernal equinox is accompanied by warmer temperatures and increase. The Japanese Cherry Blossom Festival is timed to coincide with this celebration. Bosnians enjoy the arrival of spring with scrambled eggs and toast to start the season with pleasure. On the first day of spring, early birds can be found congregating on the riverside. They make the egg dishes. Hundreds of eggs are mixed together in the open air to make simba or scrambled eggs. The people are given this food for free. The Kambaravika field by the Bosna River is where the majority of the festival action takes place. An egg represents hope for a fresh start. The custom has been around for some hundred years. People travel from all across the country to see this. Number 17. The Monkey Buffet Festival in Thailand Every year in Lopburi, Thailand, the Monkey Buffet Festival is held. People in Lopburi province, north of Bangkok, celebrated the festival by feeding 2,000 crab-eating macaques that year. The festival had been called one of the strangest in the world by attendees. 
A picture from the Monkey Buffet Festival at the Fra Prang Sam Yod Temple shows a monkey trying to get at fresh fruits and vegetables that are frozen in blocks of ice. The most famous people who live in the Thai town of Lopburi are the long-tailed macaques. There are hundreds of them, and they are free to move around among the locals and tourists. According to the Thai version of the Hindu epic Ramayana, the god Lord Rama and his friend Lord Hanuman, who looks like a monkey, built the old town of Lopburi. Some people in Lopburi think that macaques are holy animals and Hanuman's descendants because most of them live in and around the old temples. Even though they do silly things like bite through power lines, people in Lopburi feed the monkeys all year because they think it will bring good luck to Lopburi and its people. Number 16. Shoving faces in cake in Mexico. The Mexican birthday custom known as La Mordida is possibly one of the most bizarre customs in the world. When the first birthday boy or girl has their mouths thrust into the cake by a parent or other friends and family members to take the first bite, everyone else sings Mordida, Mordida, Mordida in Mexico, which is a custom. The parents are typically the ones who shove the celebrant's face into the cake. They are required to approach the youngsters covertly, wait for the child to blow out the candles, and then strike while while onlookers cheer and fire shots. The bride and groom's customs on their wedding day are the foundation of the second theory. This custom offers the choice of gently sharing cake or slamming it in each other's faces. If they smash it in each other's faces, it is assumed that the man is the relationship's dominant figure and the woman is his subordinate. Records indicate that since women are supposed to be treated equally, this custom should have ended more than 50 years ago. However, many individuals still find cake smashing enjoyable making it a very popular pastime. There are even rumors that the pair will eventually split if the wedding cake is thrown. Cake smashing has been taking place for decades, no matter what the circumstances are. Number 15. Battle of the Oranges in Italy. One of the oldest events in Italy is the Carnival in Ivrea, which dates back to 1808. Everywhere throughout the world, particularly in nations with sizable Catholic populations, Carnival is observed. People dine, drink, and celebrate the season on the streets from Rio de Janeiro to Rome. Carnival concludes with one final night of celebration known as Fat Tuesday, or Mardi Gras, after days of events and parades. The Battle of the Oranges, however, is a distinctive tradition of Carnival in Ivrea. Since 1947, the Ivrea Carnival has ended with the Battle of the Oranges. Sunday through Shrove Tuesday are the three days that it is fought. The nine teams of Aranseri, or or orange throwers on foot who represent the uprising compete against the Aranseri in horse-drawn carriages who represent the feudal forces in this game. The battle is one of the most historical festivals today, both nationally and internationally, due to its historical and cultural significance. Anyone can participate in the battle by joining one of the nine foot teams or a squad. The battle combines zeal and unity. Rivals frequently shake hands, express admiration for one another, and compliment each other on their daring and expertise. Number 14. Garawal Festival Chad's Garawal is a lively festival that has been going on for hundreds of years. Men wear dresses, apply makeup, and dance in hopes of finding a wife or, at the very least, having a passionate night. A variation on a traditional beauty pageant, the men get up early to decorate their appearances with red okra face paint, white spots, and an abundance of jewelry, and put on blue or black lipstick during lengthy preening procedures for the week that the Wadabi people congregate after traveling across the Sahel on foot, camel, or donkey with their livestock. Then, to emphasize how tall they are and how white their teeth and eyes are, they dance in long lines each evening in front of women, in front of groups of women, with their arms linked, eyes wide, and mouths apart. They chant va 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 with unearthly chattering smiles as they jump and bend to mimic the grace and elegance of the long-legged white cattle egret. Feathers are frequently worn. There is only one occasion a year when they all come together, the Gerawal. Wadabi is the proper polite name for them. You might hear them referred to as the Mabororo by other groups, but this has a little pejorative meaning, something like filthy shepherd. Number 13. Imitation of the Blackening of the Bride 
In rural Scotland and Northern Ireland, blackening is a customary wedding ritual that is carried out in the days or weeks before weddings. The bride and groom are caught by friends and family with food or other items, ideally sticky, and then paraded in front of the public for everyone to see. The pair is frequently driven in the back of an open-backed truck as their captors pound pots and pans and clatter them. There aren't any particular guidelines for the blackening procedure itself, the only requirements are that the pair be be made uncomfortably dirty, and that as many people as possible be present to watch the event. The most notable incident included Melanie Richmond, who was subjected to a five-day march from Elgin to Aberdeen while being covered in tripe, pig's blood, and feathers. Northeast Scotland, Highlands, and Northern Isles are where blackenings are most common. Although the origins of the practice are unknown, Dr. Shelia Young of the, of the Elphinstone Institute at the University of Aberdeen has conducted research that demonstrates how the blackening developed from an earlier Scottish custom known as the feet washing. Although a ritual, somewhat similar to the blackening, has its origins in Northern Ireland, the blackening has Scottish roots. Number 12. Lip Plate the lip plate is a type of body alteration that is often referred to as a lip disc, lip plug, or mouth plate. Stretching involves inserting increasingly large discs, typically circular and made of clay or wood, into a perforated hole in either the upper or lower lip, or both. The word labrette refers to a variety of pierced lip accessories, including plates and plugs. Disc and plate labyrinths were invented numerous times, according to archaeological evidence, including in Africa, like Sudan, Eritrea, and Ethiopia, circa 5500 to 6000 BC, Mesoamerica, 1500 BC, and coastal Ecuador, 500 BC. The dental extraction of two lower front teeth, or even all four, is frequently done in conjunction with the placement of a lower lip plate in various African nations. A plate is also put into the upper lip by the Sara and the Lobi of Chad. In the past, some tribes like the Mekondi in Tanzania and Mozambique would simply wear a plate on the upper lip. According to numerous reports, the size of a plate was a symbol of social or economic prominence in some cultures. The size of the plate, however, frequently depends on the extent of lip stretching and the wearer's preferences due to the natural mechanical properties of human skin. Number 11. Massive Radish Carving Festival in Mexico December is jam-packed with celebrations such as Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and Boxing Day. A festival in Mexico called Noche de los Rabanos, literally, Night of the Radishes, is not to be missed. Radishes are not a vegetable that are indigenous to Mexico. They were carried over to this country by Spanish colonists and monks well over two centuries ago. It is widely believed that two Dominician monks urged local farmers, including Zapotec and Mixtec people, as well as other indigenous groups to produce radishes, along with other fruits and vegetables that they brought in order to provide food for themselves. Huge, wonky-shaped, deep purple and red radishes are used every year on the 23rd of December in the city of Oaxaca, Mexico, to carve sculptures of dragons, alligators, local celebrities, the Virgin of Guadalupe, and even former Mexican president Benito Juarez. These sculptures are displayed in the main square, which is known as the Zolaco, the Night of the Radishes in Oaxaca, or simply Radish Night as it has become known, is a Christmas tradition that has been observed in this predominantly Catholic town for the past 125 years. During this event, artists compete for the title of having the best sculpted radish display, which awards the winner with a cash prize and bragging rights for the entire year. Number 10. Boot Tossing Finland Competitors in the sport of welly throwing, also known as welly hoying, welly wanging, and boot throwing, are tasked with hurling a Wellington boot as far as they possibly can. The game is thought to have originated in the West Country of England in the 1970s, but it has since spread across the rest of the United Kingdom as a popular fundraiser activity at village fets and other community gatherings. Finland, Estonia, Germany, Ireland, Italy, New Zealand, 
and even Russia, all now have teams of playing in the sport. The sport has numerous principles, some of which are based on local custom. For example, prior to the throwing of the boot, in some areas of Somerset, the boot is first filled with water. Some contestants permit the participant to run up before releasing the boot, while others require the throw to be made from a standing position. In order to ensure compliance with this rule, the competitor may be required to stand in an empty wastebasket during the competition. The size of the boot that is thrown in Welbury, which is located in North Yorkshire, needs to be large enough to accommodate the foot of the person who is throwing it. In some cases, the manufacturer and size of the boot are required to be disclosed. Number 9. A Groundhog Predicts How Long Winter Will Last the 2nd of February has been celebrated in the Americas as Grunsaldag, Murmeltiertag, and Grunsaldaug since the 16th century. It is celebrated as Dax Day in Nova Scotia. Pennsylvania Dutch folklore predicts that the weather will continue for another six weeks if a groundhog arises from its tunnel on this particular date and sees its shadow, while spring will arrive early if the animal fails to recognize its shadow. Whether or not the groundhog actually casts a shadow depends on the weather, which can be cloudy or clear. Studies have not consistently shown a correlation between the timing of the arrival of spring-like weather and whether or not a groundhog sees its shadow, despite the fact that the tradition is still commonly observed in the 21st century. In German-speaking countries, the badger is often regarded as a credible climatologist. Clear skies and Candlemas, a Christian holiday, seems to have enhanced the belief that this winter will be exceptionally long. Punk Sutauni Phil, a moderately large groundhog, is the focus of the most famous Groundhog Day celebration held annually in the town of the same name in western Pennsylvania. The Grunsau Cottages in Pennsylvania, in the southeast of the state, also holds festivities in honor of this holiday. Several other cities in the US and Canada now celebrate the same holiday. Number 8. Cheese Rolling, England Cooper's Hill, a town near Gloucester, organizes the Cooper Hills Cheese Rolling on the English Spring Bank Holiday. Participants run down the 180 meter long slope to win a wheel with double Gloucester cheese. The event was found many years ago by residents of the nearby community of Brockworth, and it has since attracted visitors from all over the world. With champions representing the United States, Canada, Australia, Belgium, New Zealand, Egypt, and other countries, the event was dubbed a world-famous event by the newspaper The Guardian. On May 29th of this year, 2023, was the last time something like this occurred. A round of double Gloucestershire cheese weighing 3 to 4 kilograms is rolled down the 180 meter long hill from the summit. Following the cheese, competitors then begin to sprint down the slope. The first person to reach the bottom of the hill wins the cheese. The cheese gets a head start of 1 second and can reach speeds of up to 110 kilometers per hour, fast enough to knock over a spectator and injure them as they chase after it. Multiple races take place at various times throughout the day, with separate events for men and women. For safety purposes, a foam facsimile was used in the 2013 tournament in place of the cheese. Cheese-related awards were awarded to the winners. Number 7. Foot Folding Tradition in China a Chinese tradition called foot binding involved breaking and firmly binding young girls' feet to alter their size and shape. Lotus feet and lotus shoes are terms used to describe feet that have had their arches bound. Tied feet were considered a status symbol and an indication of a woman's beauty in late imperial China. But foot binding is a cruel practice that permanently disables women and restricts their independence. Foot binding was more or less common at different times and in different places depending on social class. The custom may have started among court dancers in China's Ten Kingdoms and Five Dynasties era in the 10th century, and is progressively spread among the elite during the Song Dynasty. By the Qing era, foot binding had gradually reached lower social groups around 1636 to 1912. In the 17th century, Manchu monarchs tried to outlaw the practice, but were unsuccessful. In some cultures, foot binding improved the chances of marriage. 
perhaps as many as half of all Chinese women by the 19th century had their feet bound, with that number climbing to nearly 100% among upper-class Han Chinese women. Christian missionaries and Chinese reformers both spoke out against the practice in the late 19th century. It wasn't until the early 20th century that anti-foot-bounding movements were able to successfully put a stop to the practice. Furthermore, foot binding was abandoned earlier by upper class and metropolitan women than by poorer rural women. Only a few old Chinese women who had their feet shackled were still living as of 2007. Number 6. Neck Ring in contrast to a loose necklace, neck rings are any stiff jewelry item worn as adornment around the wearer's neck. Both men and women have worn neck rings throughout history and in many cultures and eras. One of the two most known varieties is the talk, a frequently bulky and expensive adornment that is typically open at the throat. These were worn by many ancient cultures, but they are more frequently linked to the ancient Celts of the European Iron Age. They were clearly a significant sign of wealth and prestige and were primarily worn by men. The other forms, which is frequently worn only by married ladies, consists of one or more spiral metal coils with numerous twists. Necklaces have long been associated with the idealized notion of a long graceful neck. The clavicle and ribs are pushed down by neck rings. The appearance of an extended neck is largely created by the weight of the rings, which twist the collarbone and subsequently the upper ribs at an angle that that is 45 degrees lower than what is normal. Although the gap between the vertebrae may widen when the intervertebral discs take up liquid, the vertebrae does not elongate. The neck rings must be worn by girls before puberty, in accordance with tradition to acclimatize the body to them. These substantial coils can weigh up to 5 kilograms. Number 5. Bathroom Ban After Marriage for three days following their wedding, one Eden Indonesian tribe prevents newlyweds from using the restroom. The pair cannot use the restroom for three days following their marriage, according to the Ti Dong community. The tribe's members believe that breaching this taboo will result in bad luck for the couple, such as infidelity, a failed marriage, or the early death of their children. As a result, the pair is always being observed and is only given a small amount of food and drink. They are given a bath when the three days are up and then allowed to use the restroom. The Tidong people live in the northeastern part of Borneo, close to the Malaysian-Indonesian border. The pair is required to adhere to the strange custom every time a wedding ceremony is held in the tribe. After all the formalities have concluded, the newlyweds will be shown to their designated quarters for their first three nights as husband and wife. They can't go when nature calls. That is strictly off-limits. They are watched over by family members, who are also in charge of keeping an eye on them to ensure that the couple successfully completes the challenge without using a covert bathroom. Only couples who successfully complete this task are able to enjoy enduring or long-lasting marriages, while those who will fail will have bad luck in their union. Number 4. Wearing a wedding ring in their foot since ancient times, wearing toe rings has been a tradition in India. When Saita was captured by Ravana, it is said in the Ramayana that she threw her toe ring to the ground so that Lord Rama could find her. Women who wear toe rings are typically married. The husband traditionally places the toe rings on the second toe of the bride's foot during the wedding ritual in many different Indian traditions. Bishya is the name of the garment that Hindu women wear as a sign of their married status. In India, toe Toe rings are often made of silver and worn on the second toes of both feet in pairs, as opposed to Western nations, where they are worn single or in mismatched pairings. Although more modern designs are also being produced to accommodate the modern bride, traditionally they are rather extravagant. With the exception of the little pinky, certain Bishya sets may have pairs for four of the five toes. Hindus are not supposed to wear anything below the waist made of gold, since it is considered respectable. However, toe rings made of gold and diamonds are rather common. Number 3. Polterabend in Germany 
The wedding shower, or Palterabend, is a traditional German celebration typically held the evening before the wedding. Smashing plates, flower pots, tiles, and anything that makes, that makes a lot of noise, except glass and mirrors, of course, on the floor in front of the house is thought to bring good luck to the residents inside. The bride and groom then cooperate to clean up the area as a prelude to their future together after the dishes are broken. It is customary for the Polterabend to take place in front of the bride's or the bride's parents' home, though there are occasionally variances due to factors like available space. In general, the couple does not send out individual invitations, but instead advertises the event. Word of mouth spreads information, and those who want to attend are free to do so. This is a popular strategy among couples to include guests they are unable to invite to the wedding. There is food or drink prepared, either provided for or requested by the guests. Visitors frequently bring presents to the Polterabend. Number 2. Throwing Cinnamon at 25-Year-Olds in Denmark if you turn 25 and are single in Denmark, you must endure having your friends and family cover you in a cloud of cinnamon in addition to having to spend Valentine's Day alone. You would be mistaken if you believed this was some sort of punishment for being single. These people's friends and relatives play practical jokes on them as part of a harmless tradition. There is no judging either. People in Danish society don't really judge those who haven't found a spouse by the age of 25. In actuality, Danish people are not really rushing towards marriage. The local marriage rate provides clear evidence of this. Men typically get married at age 34, while women tend to wait until they're 32. Accordingly, many people would ultimately bear the weight of this praxis. If a man or woman turns 25 and is still single, it is usual in Denmark to follow this long-standing ritual. After being doused with water, they are then completely covered in cinnamon. It's a centuries-old custom that is more of an excuse to have fun with friends and family than a means of punishment. The custom originated hundreds of years ago when spice salespeople traveled and became single in the process. They hardly ever ever stayed in one place long enough to meet a compatible mate. These salespeople were known as pepper dudes, or pepper svens, for the males, and pepper maidens, or pepperm, for the women. Number 1. The Frog Dance, Sweden some Godorna, which translates as the little frogs in Swedish, is a traditional Swedish dance and song that is usually performed in midsummer. The dance features motions that represent ears and tails, two body components that frogs lack. Some Godorna is occasionally also sung around Christmas, but Swedes dance around the Christmas tree rather than the maypole. The French Revolution's La Chanson de Louignon, or The Onion Song, a military march with the refrain Au pas, camarade, au pas, camarade, au pas, au pas, au pas, is where the music comes from. By the way, that translates to In Step, Comrade. The British, who were the French's adversaries at the time, modified the text to Au pas, grenouille, with mocking sarcasm, In Step's Little Frogs, in other words. Quite spicy, I know. The melody is still played on military occasions and in the French children's song Au Pas Camarades, which has the original lyrics. Although it is unknown how the tune got to Sweden, the Swedish lyrics are unmistakably influenced by the English song. The performance groups range in size from small family gatherings in the backyard to large crowds gathered in fields and public parks. PewDiePie, a Swedish YouTuber, has also performed it during a video while he was playing the game Prop Hunt. In Steven Spielberg's Minority Report, the song is sung by actress Caroline Lagerfeld. Peter Stormare portrays an eye doctor in the movie, and Lagerfeld plays his nurse. She then substitutes eyes for the song's reference to ears. Well, there you have it, the 20 most bizarre traditions from around the world. We hope these traditions leave you inspired and maybe a bit bewildered. Who knows, you can click on any of these videos on your screen to enjoy more of our interesting content. Anyway, this is Jake the Voice Pass signing off. Thank you very much for watching and have a good one.